All right, so the last video we created an array in our main and we populated it and then we looped through it. So let's take this another step further and let's make a class of animals and we will fill our uh, animals, we'll make an array in our class. So let's just get started so that you can see what's in my head here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a class of animals. Okay. Okay. And what I'm going to do is create a string. This is starting to look familiar, I'm hoping. A string of animals. And I don't know what's going to be in the animals at the moment, so I'm going to... No, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to make a string of animals. Okay. And then what I think I'll do is I'll create a constructor. No, nope, that's not it. A constructor of animals. And I'm going to receive in my constructor an array of animals. And so the idea here is when a new instance of an animal is instantiated in my test class main I'm going to fill I'm going to receive an array of animals and then I'm going to fill my properties which is an array so let's make that happen so the first thing I need to do is I don't have a number of elements that has been instantiated yet so I'm simply starting a, I've, I've declared that I'm going to use this variable as an array, but I haven't really created the size of the elements. I haven't created a new object of that yet, new instance of that yet. So I'm going to do a type of animals. Actually, I did animals, didn't I? Okay, so animals is equal to new string. And now how do I know what size to make it? How do I know what size to make? I know I'm receiving an array into this um, constructor. So if I take that array animals dot use that length property, there we go. So now what I've done is created an array of string. I've called it animals. And in that array, I've created a new instance of a string array and I've made the length the length of the array that I'm receiving. That's a lot of arrays. All right, but now that I've done that, I have a initialized animal array, which is a data member of my class, animals. And so now I can set that animals to array animals. And so I've now given whatever array I receive as an argument, I use the length of that to initialize my data member, which is a string array. And now I've set the data member to the array that I've received as a parameter. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is we'll take this for loop. Let's make a method and print our data members, our arrays from our animals class instead of in our main method there. So I'm going to create a public I'm not going to return anything. I'm going to print directly from here. And let's print out our animals. OK, I'm not going to receive anything because that's part of this class's data member. And remember, we did a for each. We can do a for each. For each string, uh, I'm going to use the variable animal. For each animal in animals. Oops, I must have clicked somewhere that I didn't mean to. There we go. Animals and then moles. Okay, right line. This is something we did in our main, in our last video. I'm just going to differentiate so we can see that I'm in my, uh, in my class method, just so we can be sure what I'm doing here. And then we're going to put in animal. Okay. Oh. McAfee wants to scan now. No, thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now that I've created my class, I have a, as a part of a data member of this animals class, I have an array that's animals. I've created a constructor 
So in order to create a new instance of this class, I must send an array. That array is going to be used to determine the length. So however long the array is sent, however many elements are sent to it, that's what's going to be used to initialize my uh, data member, my animals class property. And then I'm going to give that property, give that uh, array the value that I received, or the array that I received. Okay. And then we have a method here that will print loop through all of those elements that's in my, my animals data member, and we'll print out those values. So that being said, I've removed this for each. It's now in the other. It's in the class definition. And let's see here. I have all of this. OK. And so now what we'll do is we've created our array of animals. You could be getting this from a user, perhaps, or whatever you wanted to do, but I'm just hard coding those in. Uh, I'm going to create a new instance of my animals. So I need to create an instance of my animals class. I'll just call it array animals, or let's see, we'll just call it animals equals new animals class. But I need to send it an array. So I'm going to send it. Let's see, that's kind of confusing. So let's see, we'll call this one um, new, I'll just say class animals, which isn't necessarily the best name, but I'm just trying to keep this all differentiated. So class, oh, we need to send it animals. OK. And so we've created a new instance of our class animals. And we're sending it this array because the constructor required it. So the constru constructor required us to send an array. And we did. We sent this array to this constructor. And that constructor filled the data member of animals. And so now we should be able to type out array. Let's see. We used class animals. And we're going to use the print animals method and see if all works well there. So I'm going to just do a breakpoint here so we can see this run. Okay. And there it runs. And now we'll walk through the code. So we have an array of animals. Let's see that we have them in there. There they are. So we filled 0, 1, 2, 3 with these, this array. That's getting sent to our public constructor, so let's see that work. So an array was sent here. This now is uh, in our uh, is coming from our constructor, so our constructor can then use that array to fill its own data member of animals. Okay, and then now that we have a, a objects created, an instance of our animals, we should be able to print those animals in our for each loop. And as we loop through, we can see that happen. So animals getting filled. I'm going to remove and continue to run. And so we can see that, in fact, all of those methods, all of those properties from the array are being printed in our uh, from our class method. So that's how we can use arrays. We can send arrays as arguments. We could send it as return values if we needed to, right here. Um, we can even create arrays of arrays and we'll do or arrays of objects and we'll do that in our next video.